This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Audible, a leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. To get a free audiobook, visit audiblepodcast.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the reports are that WWDC sold out in somewhere between 90 seconds and two minutes, which is a pretty impressive feat. But it also means that a lot of people who wanted to attend Apple's developer conference got left out in the cold, at least to some degree. Today we have two people who are trying to warm some of that cold up a little bit by organizing the alt WWDC that is going to run in conjunction with WWDC in San Francisco this year. I want to have, welcome Judy Chen. Judy, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And Rob Elkin, uh, the other organizer. Rob, it's great to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Now, I'm introducing you both as organizers. I assume those are the correct titles. Uh, are you co-organizers? Is there a senior organizer here? Or did I do it right, Rob, and let Judy be first? <laughs> yeah, you, you did it right. You did it right. Um, there's, there's, there's actually four of us. Um, so myself and Judy, uh, Josh and Kyle as well, who aren't with us. But there, so there's four organizers, and we're co-organizers. So there's no one at the top of the tree or anything like that. Okay, that's good. Then I didn't get in trouble right off the bat. <laughs> no. So I guess the first thing we should bring up is was the 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 popularity of the regular WWDC a surprise to either one of you that it would sell out? I mean, last year I think it was 20 minutes, wasn't it? Which was pretty impressive. But this year it was boom and, and all the invitations were gone. Um, yeah, and, I mean, we pretty much expected it to sell out really quickly because uh, I think in 2011 it sold out in, what, like eight hours? And then the next year even faster, and so we knew that it was going to sell out really fast. Yeah. Uh, especially whenever they announced the, they pre-announced the ticket yeah. sales. Uh, everybody was going to be awake at that point. So before, whenever, you know, it would have been a different time zone, and you would have not had Australians um, being up at that time of night. Then everybody was online at the same time, so it was bound to sell out very quickly. Well, this is sort of a nice problem that for Apple to have, and there have been so much discussion about, well, gee, can't they do it? Make it larger. In a way, I'm kind of glad to see that they don't, because that would degrade the quality of it. I, I mean, there's just, at some point, a conference can get too big, especially when there are only so many Apple engineers to go around. So it is what it is. And besides, it's Apple, so they're going to do it their way, and nobody's going to change them. Um, but, and this, this isn't the first year that this has happened uh, where people got left out in the cold. And I didn't realize it until we were talking pre-show that this is the second alt WWDC. It yep. started last year? Yep. Um, yeah. It was actually uh, Rob's idea, and he brought it to me because I run a nonprofit in Amsterdam called Amsterdam, and uh, Rob came to visit. Uh, we have a co working space where people can work out of for free. Uh, they can feel free to talk to the person next to them and ask questions and uh, get their problems figured out. Um, and Rob really enjoyed that. And uh, when we knew that WWDC was going to sell out, he came up with this great idea to do something on the side. Yeah. Um, and so actually last year, there were three events that were happening as yeah. part of the alternative circuit. Um, one of them was ours. Uh, one of them was Cal Kincaid, who ran Indie Dev Lab. Um, and there was also Josh, who ran Intersect at WWDC. Um, and so that's how the four of us managed to get together this year because we were chatting after the conference and we kind of realized, well, we don't need to have three separate events. We, if we pool all our resources, we can make one fantastic event. And so that's what all WWDC will be this year is the combination. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so with that, what will all WWDC offer? Um, well, first and foremost, it's a co-working space, so if you want a break from the conference or you're even not even going to the conference, um, you can come along, you can get a desk, get Wi-Fi, get some food, um, so that at its core is, is what it's all about, um, but we're 
we're also uh, bringing speakers in. Um, so we're going to have a couple of speakers every day. Um, so you can either sit around and work, or you can go and uh, listen to some speakers. Um, and we're also going to have a free lunch as well. Um, so every day we're going to put on lunch, and after that you get to listen to some speakers, um, and generally just hang out with people that uh, you wouldn't normally meet. Um, or maybe you would normally meet them, but you would meet them in a bar or something like that. So um, it's a good opportunity to socialize outside of the conference. So yeah. it's, it's and we're also planning on uh, having another room for labs as well. Yep. So this is very much going to follow the model of an unconference of a. Very, it's a very. It sounds like a, a very loosely structured kind of event, with the exception of the speakers, who I'm sure will be on some kind of schedule. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. We haven't set the schedule for the speakers yet because, well, we didn't know who was going to be in town uh, for WWDC, so we didn't know who was available. Um, we're going to be setting the schedule over the next couple of weeks, um, over the next week or two, I guess. Um, and then the speakers will have a, a definite schedule, um, and there will always be the lunch at a certain time. So apart from that, pretty much anything can happen. Um, and apart, well, I guess apart from Monday as well, because Monday is going to be particularly special. We're going to have a keynote breakfast um, where we're going to put the light logs of the keynote up, um, and then we're going to, you know, people come along. They can watch them, and we did this last year as well. It turned out really well because you can kind of get the information flow from the keynote, but you can also have an opportunity to sit around and chat with people about what's going on and speculate about what's coming next. And it makes a really nice, friendly atmosphere. Very nice, very nice. I, I, I can't help but ask. I, I think I heard the word free in there several times, <laughs> and anyone that's been to San Francisco knows that eh, free is really tough to do in that city, especially yeah. during a conference of, of this magnitude. How are you managing this? Is it uh, are you sponsored or are you pulling it out of your own pockets, or how does it work? Uh, yeah, we're looking for sponsors now. We already have a, f a couple signed up and. Uh, some have contacted us, contacted us in the past 24 hours, really interested in sponsoring as well. So that's how we're able to make it free. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so we've got the what and a little bit of the, of the content. Um, where is it? Um, it's going to be at uh, the SF State campus, um, which is in. It's between Market and Mission on 4th, uh, and it's basically, if anybody knows that area, it's where the Westfield Shopping Center is. It's part of that complex, um, so it's one block from Moscone, basically. Is that, is that the one that's it's right, one of the entrances is right on Market, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's an entrance on Market and one on Mission. Yep. Very nice. So it's literally right around the corner. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that'll be fantastic. That'll be fantastic. Uh, is it appropriate to ask what kind of sponsorship levels you have, or is that something that people should contact any of, of you organizers for? Uh, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, well, we have a, a number of different levels. Um, it's probably best if, if people are interested in sponsoring um, that they get in touch with us directly, I think, um, and we can have a chat with them around their needs and what they're looking to, to achieve from it. Um, so if they just, uh, they can go onto the website, saltwwdc.com, uh, or they can email altwwdc at amsterdam.rs, um, and we'll be able to get back to them. Great. And if you said it, I apologize, I missed it, but is this for the full week, all, all, every day of WWDC, there will be an alt WWDC? Yeah, we're planning it for the whole week. I know at least one of the speakers, Brett Terpstra, has been announced. Um, mm -hmm. And Brett, Brett's a friend. He's been on the show. So that, that was great. There are a number of other people that you've already announced. Can you run through those? Yeah, we've got uh, Mike Lee, who helped to found Amsterdam. Um, we have Victor Agreda Jr., um, Marcus Zara, Saul Mora, uh, Brent Simmons. Uh, <laughs> let's see, who else do we have? Well, that's a pretty healthy roster right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, so and we're still looking got, for more. Yeah, we've got Daniel Jalcott, mm -hmm. uh, we've got Lex Friedman, uh, Nick, T Nick Ticken. Uh, Neil Ticken, yeah. Neil Ticken, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Steve Scott um, and uh, C uh, Cesar Rochi. I can never pronounce his surname. Uh, Cesare Rochi. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Judy. 
Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much our list right now. Uh, there's a couple of other people that we're talking to, but we're not ready to announce because they haven't confirmed yet. So right. So they'll just be talking about, I guess, development from the various aspects, or will they be giving coding tips, or is it sort of up to them to deliver whatever they want to talk about? Well, we've got basically themed days, um, and uh, the f first day, of course, we, is the Monday keynote. Like, we have a panel discussion discussing the Apple's, Apple's keynote, what they're going to announce, um, and Tuesday is for games and um, UX or design. Wednesdays for dev tips and tricks. Thursdays for business, and Friday is more like lifestyle, uh, li living the indie life kind of thing, personal experiences. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to expand it uh, beyond just code yeah. um, into uh, something that everybody can be interested in. So if you're not necessarily a coder, but you want to come and, and learn something about design, then you can come along and do that. Um, so hopefully it'll cover a, a big spectrum of uh, things to learn about. And now, a word from Mac Voice's newest sponsor, Audible. With audiobooks from Audible, you not only get to make use of time that otherwise might be wasted, but because you're able to listen while you're doing almost anything, you are able to enjoy all sorts of books that you otherwise might keep on your reading list and never get to. One of my recent favorites is Red, My Life in Rock by Sammy Hagar. It doesn't matter if you know Sammy from his solo career music, like I Can't Drive 55, or from his stint as lead singer for Van Halen. You're going to love hearing about Sammy's rise to rock stardom with all the wild tour stories you would expect, along with some interesting insights into his approach and attitudes toward music. An entertaining, enjoyable read? This is only one of the staggering collection of audiobooks covering any topic or genre you can think of, from business to fantasy, mystery to self-development. Want to get my pick or one of your own for free? Just go to audiblepodcast.com slash macvoices and try Audible for 30 days on top of that free book. That's audiblepodcast, A-U-D-I-B-L-E, podcast.com slash macvoices. What are you waiting for? Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. I think this is such a great idea. The, the developer community is a fantastic community. It's the one that's necessary for... Apple and, and for all the users and everything. But it's one that unfortunately doesn't get the same the same focus that so many other areas do. WWDC obviously helps, but it's still Apple's event. This sounds like it's a little bit more by the coders, for the coders. And, and, and the lifestyle thing on the last day just points to that, that this is a lifestyle for so many of you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's not a top-down approach. It's more of a grassroots organization. Are you accepting registrations, or is it more or less a, a kind of show-up-if-you-want-to thing? I mean, that seems a little bit hard to plan for you all. Yeah, so what we have um, is on the Alt -W -W -Alt -W -C site, um, you can uh, get a ticket through Eventbrite, uh, and that kind of gives us an indication of how many people are going to be coming. Um, but it's all free, so um, it just allows us to plan for lunches and things like that um, to make sure that we have enough space for everybody. Very nice. I can, uh, with, with some of your speakers and some of your theme days, I could see people, even the people who were lucky enough to get a, a, a regular WWDC ticket, wanting to alternate back and forth, depending on what their interest or areas of expertise are. Yeah, well, I mean... That, that was part of the idea. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, not every um, topic in WWDC or every speaker session in WWDC even is going to be of interest to everybody all the time. Um, so there's plenty of room for you to step out of the, the big conference and, and come down and visit us for maybe a little bit of a break and a little bit of a change. Okay, so this is WWDC. It's a tech conference, so I have to ask about the parties. <laughs> Are you all planning any after-hours social kind of things, or do those sort of develop organically from your perspective? Um, we want to leave the parties to the other people because there's already so many nighttime events. Like, it's hard to just go to one, you know. 
Um, so we, we don't want to compete with that. We're more focused on the daytime stuff. Yeah. Plus, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of organization that goes into it. We don't need to organize an entire day and an entire exactly. night. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're happy to receive invitations to parties, but we're right. happy doing our own. <laughs> and to send those invitations, altwwdc.com, right? I, I yes. guess. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> We all laugh about the parties, but you know that in any of the tech conferences, even the consumer level ones, that's still where a lot of yeah. things get done. There's a lot to be said for the for the show floors and the conferences itself. They're extremely important, but a lot of business and a lot of connections get made after hours. So that's that's not to be overlooked. But what you're putting together sounds like it incorporates a little bit of that informal feel. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, that's what Judy was saying before. Whenever I first came up with the, the concept of this, it was because I went to Amsterdam during a conference, but I didn't go to the conference. Um, I still got a huge amount from it because of the people that I met there whenever I was kind of sitting around and working on my own projects, but still getting to meet people and talk to people. So that's exactly what we're trying to recreate. I applaud you. Undertaking something like this is not an easy task, and especially to do it with where you don't aren't guaranteed the funding just yet. If you found a venue, you found a venue extremely convenient to to Moscone. Uh, it sounds like a really really interesting thing, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it as it goes along. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean we've been planning this for pretty much a year now, so. Now it's time to accept our attendees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, folks, definitely go to Alt WWDC. Check the, check out everything that they are offering, and obviously, as they said, there's going to be a lot more announced between now and June when uh, when this takes place. Guys, is there any kind of email announcement list? Do you have a Twitter account or anything to, for folks to follow? Maybe you stay updated a little bit differently. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so on altwdc.com, um, you can sign up to the mailing list as well as get a ticket, which will help us do our planning. Um, there's also the Amsterdam Twitter account, um, which Judy can confirm, but I'm pretty sure it's Amsterdam RS. Uh, yeah. So you well, it's that just at well. Amsterdam. Oh, is it? Okay. Apologies. It's uh, at Amsterdam, and uh, we've been using the hashtag altwdc too. Oh, one last point I want to make is that this is not this points to the to the globalization of the developer community Judy's in Amsterdam Rob is in London you two don't live in the US I mean you're putting this together all remotely which I think is very cool but it also just shows off what a global community this is and I, I applaud that a great deal I think it's very cool yeah, uh, I mean, last year um, it was the same. This year we're really lucky because Josh and Kyle are in the US and they're able to help us out um, with with any kind of situational organizing that needs to happen. So Josh was able to go down and, and view the space before we booked it, um, which was fantastic. Uh, I mean, that's just, I, I guess that's just part of Amsterdam in general. Uh, Amsterdam has, has these kind of embassies all over the world in Paris and in Rome and Toronto. Um, so, you know, if you're part of that organization, you can always, you know, find other people that you need to talk to or that will be willing to talk to you to be able to help you. Um, and whenever you're putting on something that's for free and that people enjoy, then they're a lot more willing to help you anyway, um, which is fantastic. It's just kind of a testament to the entire community, I guess. Uh, I'm just really proud of the community that we have. Um, I think it's very strong, and uh, I'm, I'm just really happy that we could put this on for the community. The interest in WWDC, the interest in alt WWDC, just clearly shows that developers are leaving Apple by the droves, and Apple's doomed, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what it means. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can't see Apple being around in a couple of years. We won't be doing this in a couple of years. <laughs> no, no. It just, it just, it ama it amazes me when you see those things. Uh, yeah, and, and you hear of so many people making a living off of Mac and iOS apps. So, uh, and sure, there, there are other platforms and there's some good other platforms, but this is a pretty pretty impressive one. And Judy, I think like you said, the community aspect of it is, is really wonderful. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what Amsterdam is all about and that's what Alt-WWDC is all about. 
Well, I hope to see you both in San Francisco. I hope to make it uh, to to. I definitely will make it to all WWDC. I'll be standing outside WWDC with my nose pressed up against the glass because I didn't get a ticket. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for the time, um, folks. Please go and, and check this out. I, if you if you're a developer, if you didn't get a ticket, or if you just maybe didn't want to spend the money for Apple's ticket, but like to go and find out more about the developer community. It seems like a good chance. Judy, Rob, thanks again. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Folks, this is Mac Voices, the talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. We will be back with more soon, and we hope maybe to see you at WWDC in San Francisco and definitely at Alt-WWDC in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and for more Apple, Mac, and tech-related shows, including Mac Voices, Mac Notables, the Mac Jury, and the Mac Voices Briefing. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.